Hey, what's going on everyone? Tim here, and thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial today. Um, I have a fun one with this hypnotic loop, kind of that surreal dreamy look, and super easy to build out. This is based off a project I did actually a couple years ago, but I kind of pulled it out of the archives and I was like, oh, this would be a fun one. So we're just gonna go ahead and jump right in and get this thing going. And we are in After Effects today with the default layout and only stock plugins as usual, so everyone can make this and join in on the fun. So let's go ahead and make a new composition here. I'm gonna go ahead and click that new comp icon. And in the composition name, let's name that base. And this will be our base composition. We're gonna go 1920 by 1080, 24 frames per second, 15 seconds long on duration. So let's hit okay. And we have our empty base composition. So this is based off of one shape layer that we're gonna add a repeater to, super easy to build out. And let's go ahead and make that. So right click in our timeline, new shape layer. We have our shape layer right here. I'm gonna twirl that down and go to add rectangle. And this is gonna be based off this rectangle path here. Let's twirl that down. And I'm gonna unlink the size so that we can customize the X and Y. And let's just make this the size of the comp. So 1920 on the X by 1080 on the Y. Position we can leave the same and roundness. I'm actually gonna bump this all the way up to a thousand. And so I'm doing this with the rectangle path because I don't want to stretch out any lips like this to make this oval track looking shape. And so the roundness on this gives us the stroke width um, evenly, which is nice. So let's go ahead and twirl up our rectangle path and add a stroke. I'm going to come to add stroke, twirl that down. Not much we have to do here. We'll just change the stroke width to 50, get that nice and thick, and then twirl down the taper. And on the start and end length, I'm going to change both of those to 50%. So five zero five zero on the start and end length and you can see now we have that nice taper on the right side while keeping that stroke width on the left side and that's exactly what we want i'm going to twirl up that taper twirl up my stroke and then add one more thing here so i'm going to add the repeater and this is what's going to give us that loop we're going to animate right here with the keyframe and this will kind of run the whole loop itself so let's twirl down the repeater one and on the copies, um, it defaults at three, but we want to bump this like way, way up so that we have enough copies on that last frame and the first frame where they match up and we don't get any skipping or like there's not enough copies all the way in the background to where it kind of flashes on and off the screen. So let's go ahead and change that to 75. And you can see now we have those 75 copies. They're going way off the screen here. Um, and we're going to animate this offset and that's what's going to kind of make this thing and generate that loop. So on my timeline here, I'm going to take my playhead to zero frame, zero seconds, and get to that first frame. And I'm going to click the stopwatch on offset to add our first keyframe. And I'm going to change that to negative 30. You can see that pushed everything over to the left here. And then let's take our playhead all the way to the end, 15 seconds on that last frame. And we'll change that to negative 20. So negative 20. If I scrub through, you can see we have a nice slow moving loop. Last frame and first frame match up. So... Obviously this isn't what we want it to look like, but we're just gonna change a couple things here and get this to where we want it. So let's drop down the transform repeater one. Make sure you're dropping down this transform and not the main transform. And on the position, let's take that X to zero so that we're all lined back up and stacked back up here. The scale, I'm gonna change that to 75 and that looks good. You can see now we're kind of moving back in time there, which is nice. And then on the rotation, let's change that to 20 degrees. And so we got that nice twist there. And now we really look like we're spiraling into the distance there. And that's exactly what we want. So on this loop specifically, I went um, with it kind of pushing away from the screen instead of pulling forward um, towards you. Um, a lot of loops are coming towards you, but I think the hypnotic look um, of it kind of drawing you into the screen, drawing you into that uh, dimension really works here. You know, those are kind of things you want to think about as you make these loops, like how... Um, how someone reacts to it when they watch it. So I think it kind of pulling you away um, is what we want, kind of that dream uh, sub-reality scenario. So I'm going to twirl up transform repeater one. And again, this is where the copies come into play. So I just want to showcase this real quick. If I zoom in here and you can see on the last frame and the first frame match up. So if I kind of drop this down, you know, to say 40 copies and I go to that last frame and that first frame, you can see where you kind of run out of copies there on the offset. And that's not what you want. So I kind of always with these repeaters, um, really bump it way up 
I don't know like what exact number you need, but I find the more the better as you're kind of building these loops um, just so you don't run out of uh, real estate there. So that's really all we need to do for this loop. I'm going to zoom back out here, play through it just a second. That looks great. I love it. So let's twirl up our shape layer and I'm going to go ahead and create a new composition. So let's come to our project panel here and we have our create new composition icon. I'm going to click that. And in our composition name, I'm just going to name that FX because this is where we're going to kind of put all the plugins in and get this thing stylized. And then all the settings should be the same, 1920, 1080, 24 frame per second, and 15 seconds long. So let's hit OK. And back in my project panel, I'm going to grab my base composition and drag that into my empty FX composition. And nothing we need to do with that base comp, but we're going to create five adjustment layers here. And I'll kind of share why I do that. So first of all, let's go into our timeline, right click new adjustment layer. And we're going to do that five times. And so the reason why I do so many adjustment layers and with this, instead of stacking them all onto one composition um, or one adjustment layer is because it's just easier for me to come and turn things on and off as I go through to see how they're affecting something. Maybe if I run into a problem, I can just kind of turn these on and off very quickly. And it's just a lot easier than going into one giant adjustment layer, scrolling through, trying to find it. But most of the time, this is what I like to do, especially in these smaller projects where it's easy to see and everything. But let's go ahead and go through here and rename these. So adjustment layer one, I'm going to rename that to blur one. On adjustment layer two, let's name that edges. Third one, CC. Adjustment layer four, I'm going to name that glow. And the fifth one, let's name that blur two. And so I just name these according to what effect I'm going to put on them. And that's just easy to kind of identify the layer as we go through. So let's start with the blur one. I'm going to click on that. I'm going to come over to my effects and presets. And over my effects and presets panel, I'm going to type in radial fast blur. And it should bring up the CC radial fast blur right here. And that's exactly what we want. So I'm going to double click on that, making sure it's on that blur one. And you can kind of see what's happening here. We're kind of losing the edges, the harsh edges of that stroke and turning this more into a dimensional panel. So especially if I kind of zoom in right here, you can see it almost looks like we're layering it with these uh, with these gradients that are coming off that blur. Um, and this is just an easy way to stylize that and sell that effect. So we're going to bump this way up to 90 on the amount. And even more so now, you're definitely seeing that where it looks more structured and not just a wireframe. But now it looks like we have these kind of blades stacking on top of each other, which is what we want here. So that's all we need to do with the CC radial fast blur. Um, just like that, we're already looking good. So this is a great base to build off of as we stylize the rest of this. So I'm going to come back down to my timeline, click on the edges adjustment layer, come to my effects and presets and type in find. And it should just bring up find edges. And that's what we want. Let's double click on that. And this is all we need to do here. So... I'm going to zoom in real quick again and turn off find edges. And you can see we're really soft on the edges of this thing um, from that blur. And just turning that fine edges on brings these more into a sharp edge where, again, we're looking more structured here. Instead of just kind of like a soft looking uh, blurry tunnel here, this actually looks more like we're stacking these blades on top of each other. So super easy. Nothing we need to do except apply that find edges to the adjustment layer. And let's come to our CC panel. And let's move on to our CC adjustment layer. So this will be color correction. I'm going to zoom back out there. Over my effects and presets with my CC adjustment layer selected, I'm going to type in toner. And that'll bring up CC toner. Let's double click on that. And right off the bat, I'm going to change this to pen tone. And that'll give us access to all five of our colors here from highlights to shadows. So this is all up to you what colors you want to use. But I was going for more of that kind of surreal, dreamy, kind of chromey look, um, really highlighting those bluish purples. I really like how that felt with this instead of going like crazy neon colors or anything like that. But again, if that's what you want to do, go right ahead. This is all up to you. But I'll go ahead and give you the hex codes that I use for this if you want to follow along exactly with me. So on the highlights, I kind of found a mid gray um, that I liked. And so I'll show you why I chose that here in a second. But I'm going to go 7A, 7A, 7A on those highlights and hit OK. And then let's come to the brights. I'll click on that. I'm going to change that to 008FFF. We'll get kind of that nice like sky watery blue. On the midtones, I'm going to click on that one. And let's go FDFF00. Nice bright yellow. Hit OK. Let's click on those dark tones. FF0000. A nice red. And hit OK. 
And then on the shadows, we're going to leave those at black. So now you can see we have this nice like blue, um, really dark looking loop. We're going to brighten this up a bit. But the reason I chose the gray on the highlights is because that's really going to affect um, the color all around this thing. So even here, if I go red, you can see this really turns pink, that pinkish red, you know, and as you go through the spectrum, you'll just kind of get all those different colors. So again, if you want that more neon look, um, definitely go with that. But I really liked that mid gray that we chose originally. Let's move on to our glow and really brighten this thing up. So I'm gonna click on my glow adjustment layer down in my timeline, come over to effects and presets, type in glow, double click. And not much we need to do on this. We're gonna keep that on color channels for what the glow is based on. But on my threshold, I'm gonna drop that to 25%, the glow radius to 85, and the glow intensity to three. And so now we've really brightened this up. I'm gonna turn that off and on. You can see we're really starting to see this thing all the way through and also adding like a nice bloom to those glows and those edges to give it more of that dreamy surreal effect. So this looks great. Everything else can stay the same on the glow. And the last thing we need to do is go to this blur to adjustment layer, come over to our effects and presets and type in channel blur. And that'll bring up that channel blur. I'm going to double click on that and we'll keep all these settings the same except for the blue blurriness since we're playing a lot with this blue right here. I'm going to change that from zero to 100. And now we're getting that really nice gradient, a lot of blues in those glows and those shadows. And then on the edges, we have those reds and greens. And then you can even start seeing those reds and pinks in there in that gradient reflection. So this looks really nice. We turn that on and off and you can see what a difference that makes. Even though it's subtle, it really sells the effect even more. So this is really all we need to do on uh, the FX. And so let me play through this real quick. Yeah, it's looking perfect. Love how that's turning out. We can end it there, but I'm gonna show one more effect that we can do just to sell this even more on the dreamy, surreal effect. And it's just with one more plugin and then we are good to go. Send you guys on your way. So come back over to my project panel, click that new comp icon, and we're gonna name this render. And we're gonna make this our render comp. All the settings should be the same as we've been using. Click okay. Come up to my project panel, grab my FX composition, drop that into my render comp, which is empty. And this is where we'll add our last effect here. So let's go ahead and right click new adjustment layer. And I'm gonna rename this one to glass. Keep that selected. I'm gonna come over to my effects and presets, type in glass, and it should bring up that CC glass under stylize. Let's double click that. And nothing we really need to do other than change the bump map to the effects layer so that we're pulling that in. And then I'm gonna twirl down my light and change the light intensity from 100 to 150 to bring in even more of that glow and brighten that all up. And look how deep those shadows are getting, which is really nice, adds to that stacked effect um, on those blades. So if I turn that on and off, you can see what a difference just those two settings make. So I'm gonna go ahead and play through. I love how that's turning out. So you can see up here, we're kind of getting that light source shooting in off the top left screen. We got those really deep shadows down here in the bottom right. And this thing is just easy to get lost in. I love too how we have right here in the middle that blur is kind of that first radio blur is giving us that nice little like shimmer on the light. Looping perfectly. Zoom back out here. And that is it guys. Again, a few simple steps just to create this effect. Super visually appealing. I love that hypnotic look. It's really drawing you in, really selling that effect. It's easy to get lost in this one, and it looks really cool on LED walls, on screens, behind lyrics, things like that. And so I'd love to see how you guys are gonna use this one. Go ahead over on Instagram, hit me up over there, at Timmy Dwyer. I'm always down to connect with you guys over there. Shoot me a DM or tag me in your post so I can see what you're working on. I've seen you guys share these tutorials, the loops you've made, how you've used them in other projects in your creative work, and that's really fun to see. So I love interacting with y'all over there go hit me up on Instagram. You can also drop a comment below this video, give me some feedback, some ideas for future tutorials, um, or if you need some troubleshooting, any steps um, you're having trouble on, I'd love to walk you through those and help you out the best I can. So you can also go over to my store, radloops.com. I got a lot of fun assets over there, some project files, things that'll help you in your projects, in your video work, in your motion graphics, um, just making your life easier as a creative because we all need that um, these days. So I'll drop a link in the description for that and go over and download whatever you need to. But other than that, thanks again for joining me on this tutorial. I can't wait for the next one, but until then, y'all have the best day.